Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Now that we have the data structures in place for geometry asset, we can go ahead and unpack the imported geometry so that we can process it further in the level editor and finally save it to an asset file. Before we start, I'd like to show you something that makes me really happy and proud. And that's when I see my viewers taking the engine code and making their own additions to it. For example, here Scott has added his own DirectX 12 renderer and is using a geometry component to add cubes to the scene. And here is Dexstar's work, who is implementing a live share feature for the engine so that multiple users can work on the project at the same time. I think that's great. I feel really flattered to see that my work serves as a base to build your own features on. So that's what I wanted to share because I think it's really cool and rewarding. Anyway, let's get back to the geometry asset class. So here in geometry class, we will have a list of LOD groups or lot groups. Normally, when we use a geometry asset, it just contains one object per geometry asset. But when we are importing a file that could contain multiple objects, we put more than one item in this list. But normally, we just use one item per geometry. So here I just wrote a helper function that will return one of these objects. And if we don't give it any parameters, it will just return the first object in this list. Okay, so let's write this from raw data function. First, we clear the lot group. So we just throw away any data that we have. Here I create a binary reader so that I'll be able to read the binary data in this buffer. So now we basically do the reverse of what we did here in geometry CPP. Here we wrote the data in the buffer like this. And in this geometry asset class, I'll read this data in the same order. First, we skip the scene name because I'm not going to use the scene name for now. So here I read the number of bytes that the scene name contains, and then I'll skip over those. So this binary reader has a base stream, which is this memory stream based on this data. And like we did here manually by having this at, whenever we read from that, it will adjust this position. So when I read a 32-bit integer, it will increase this position by four bytes. And now because I'm not reading a string, I just manually increase this position. Now we get a number of LODs.
And then for each of those LODs, we read the data that belong to one LOD. Here, if we have a length for the LOD group name that is larger than zero, then we just read that many bytes and then use the UTF-8 encoding to convert it to a string for us. But if we don't have a name, then we need to make up our own. And the way I'd like to do that is to just generate a random string. So let's write a little random string generator in the static class. So I'll add a new class in the helpers file that we have here in common. So here is a function that will generate a random string and it has an optional parameter that will generate a random string of eight characters and we can use it to generate larger strings if we wanted to, but on default it generates eight characters. Here I'm going to divide this length by 11 because I'm going to just be lazy and use a function that already exists and it generates random file names for us. And those file names are 11 characters long. This one will generate something like this with eight characters and an extension with also a random string. So by removing this period, we end up with 11 characters. Okay, so now we need a string builder. And depending on how many chunks of 11 characters we need, we can do a for loop and then call this get random file name multiple times until we get the number of characters that we want. This loop will generate a multiple of 11 characters for us. So if we wanted 12 characters, then it will generate 22 characters first. And then we just take the first 12 characters from that. So this is all we need to generate a random string. Okay, let's move on. Now that we have the name of our lot group, we can go ahead and read in all the meshes that it contains. To read the content of each mesh, I'm going to write a new function, read mesh lots. And after we have all these LODs, we can add them to the lot groups here. So let's assume that we have this function and we get back an array of LODs, then we can add them to the lot groups. Okay, let's write read mesh LODs. Here 
Here we need to look at these lot IDs as we had here. We need to look at these lot IDs and see what meshes go in the same level of detail. To do that, I'll have a list of lot IDs and a list of meshes, and then I can consolidate all meshes that belong in one level of detail together. Okay, let me first write this read meshes function and then I'll explain how it works with load IDs and load list. Again, if we have a valid mesh name, I'll just read that one. But if we don't, then I'll generate a random string again, like we did for LODs and use it for the mesh name. Here we are reading the size and the number of vertices and the size and the number of indices in the same order as we wrote them to this buffer and also the lot threshold as a single precision floating point value. Next I'm going to calculate the size of vertex and the index buffers. and we can use these to read the vertex and index buffers. Here is where we put meshes with the same lot ID together in the same mesh lot, so they belong to the same lot. So if we already have a lot ID in our list of lot IDs, that's the same as the one that we got here. That means that there is already a mesh lot for those meshes with this lot ID. And therefore we can add this mesh that we have here to the mesh lot that we already have. Here we just check if we already have a lot ID and if so we take the mesh lot that belongs to this lot ID from the list of LODs and that way we can put our mesh in this LOD and otherwise we need to create a new mesh lot and add the lot ID to the list of IDs so that we can look it up later again and in this way we put all the meshes with the same lot ID together. This concludes unpacking data in the geometry class. Next time we are going to call create primitive mesh function from the level editor so we can test if everything that we have been doing so far works as intended and see if we can actually generate a primitive mesh. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. 
I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.